Sabal Her, Marhaban Bikum Fiat Dubai. My name is Benedetta Ghione, and I'm the executive director of the fair. I am delighted to be joined here today by my colleagues, our Dubai's artistic director, Pablo Del Val, who will share some of this year's highlights of our program, Shumon Bassar, commissioner of the Global Art Forum, who will talk more about the 16th edition of the forum, as well as our expanded talks and conference programming for this year, and Hala Kayat, our Dubai's regional director, who will share a short summary of the fair and its program for our Arabic speakers. Before I hand you over, I would first like to acknowledge and thank the fantastic team that I have the privilege to work with, and who, with our partners, partners across the city, have helped make this event the highlight of the cultural calendar in Dubai. As a small team of 35 people from 22 countries, we have built a unique model that for nearly 20 years has been developing and delivering some of the leading cultural events in this region. What you will see today is our Dubai, our flagship event. And for those of you visiting for the first time, we are the leading international art fair for the Middle East and the Global South. However, across the year, we also run over 20 programs in the fields of commissioning, education, thought leadership, and events that we see as an evolution of the standard fair model that is able to contribute much more to the communities we serve, both in Dubai and beyond. To give you a few examples, to encourage patronage in the arts, we run the Dubai Collection, which is the first institutional collection of modern and contemporary art for the city of Dubai. Launched by Dubai Culture, the initiative is built on a unique and innovative model that gathers works from private collection based in Dubai and wider region. To help build, create, uh, to help build a creative community, we have operated for the last 10 years Campus Art Dubai, an education program for both artists and cultural practitioners. To support innovation and help make the world a better place, Prototypes for Humanity mobilizes academia, private and public sector and build a tangible solution for global issues. To provide arts education to the next generation, our children's program, in partnership with RM Holding, brings international artists to over 9,000 students across the UAE every year. And to support design talent, we operate every year Dubai Design Week, the leading platform for creatives and designers in the region. We believe Art Dubai can play a unique role in the challenging of what an art fair can be. And perhaps as a testament to the success of this model, we are today delighted to announce that ARM Holding will be renewing its lead partnership with Art Dubai for a further five years. And Julius Baer, who has been a lead partner of the fair now for seven years, announced in November a further five-year partnership as well. I very much hope you will enjoy this week's program, and I will now hand over to Pablo. Thank you, Benny. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Dubai, 16th edition of the fair. Um, the team that is here with us this morning, we could say that uh, the vision that we are going to be presenting to you today started to take shape eight years ago as a result of an evolution of what Dubai has been for these last 16 years. Um, at the heart core of the project is the idea, the will, and the possibility of showcasing an advert that is different to the others, a place where you can come and see things together that generally you don't see in the West or you don't see in other places from the Global South. An advert that gathers a, region, uh, gathers a number of regions and a number of communities that generally in the mainstream uh, art uh, world become a very, very small percentage. We are really uh, happy of really being in a way, a door or a window to these uh, geographies and being able to bring to Dubai precisely the best from these regions. 
Uh, we truly believe that the fair represents what is the DNA of, of Dubai, of Dubai as a city, a city that is built by so many micro-communities that they live together in harmony, and a city that, in a way, is giving uh, the chance for all these communities to represent their own ways of understanding life and culture. So the art fair represents, in a way, a mirror to this reality, and what we intend precisely is be different in that way. We are not about, uh, let's say, um, exotic presentations. We are not about the exception. We are not about bringing energies and galleries and projects that, in a way, are seen in the West like, like the exotic. We are really looking to those regions that uh, really build up the city and they reflect what the global south really is. The fair is divided, as you know, in four sections. Uh, the first section is contemporary, which has a, an advisory committee, a selection committee, like any other major fair in the world, which brings works by uh, galleries and artists uh, spread out around the world. Being extremely exciting that this year the percentage of non-Western European, North American galleries has escalated in a really fantastic way, saying that most of the, a very, very large percent of the content really is coming from, from these geographies. Africa, Middle East, Latin America, South Asia, Central Asia. So it's really fantastic that you are going to see amazing examples coming from this part of the world. And also that many of these galleries that are participating in the main section especially the Western ones, are bringing with a roster of artists from the galleries that are linking to these realities that we try to bring together in our Dubai. The other section is the modern section that you know that is the only section in the world that is focused on the Middle East, Africa, and South Asia. This year is curated by, by two persons, by Mona Kenoir, a Moroccan curator based in Paris, freelancer, and Lorenzo Giusti, Italian curator, which is a director of GEMAC in Bergamo. And they've done a fantastic job in bringing 10 projects that are discussing about modernity in a completely different way. They're looking to practices that are mainly based in different uh, ideas or different focuses as the ones that we did in the past. They're looking more about artists that have been the beginning of certain vocabularies in these regions like Rashid Arad from, from, uh, from Pakistan, or Monir Mashrufash Tamayan from, from Iran, uh, the discovery of the new body of works after she passed away from, from Anna Saudi. So you're going to see a selection of works of artists that they really manage and help to build up a new vocabulary for the contemporary times. The Bawaba section that you know that is focused into uh, 10 solo projects of artists coming from the global south, uh, of works that have been produced in this last year, which is cur curated by Bipas Purishanant, which is a curator coming from, from Thailand. And then you have the, digi the digital section, which is the second year that is taking place, that is curated by Clara Cheipe, coming from Singapore. Uh, also, the selection of curators that we do yearly pretends also to reflect the richness of these regions, and to bring people that is specialized in, 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 in understanding what is happening in these geographies. Our Dubai is also extremely exciting because we think that in a way you have this chance of walking around the gallery halls and being able of seeing things that are really rare to see together. In a hall, you can jump from Iran to Saudi. You can jump from Stockholm, from, from, from Sweden to, to Lebanon, and you can really make a reading of what is happening in these regions in a very, very exciting way. On the other hand, we're very keen also in, in producing and putting together a non-for-profit program that is not only talks and the global uh, art forum and, and other type of gatherings, but also uh, giving the chance to certain artists and certain geographies to be represented in a different way. For us, it's extremely important all what is around community building, all what is around understanding each other. So this year we put together a project, which is Advice Commission for 2022, 2023, sorry, which is called uh, Chopal. Chopal is a community space where discussions, talks, gatherings happen in Pakistan and India. And we have built two spaces in the Johara foyer that are going to bring light into this. So we invited 15 artists from this region, from South Asia, 
India, Pakistan, uh, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, to prepare a dish, to cook something. A dish that is linked directly to the art production and is linked to the own life family experiences. So everyone is going to be presenting these dishes in this cafeteria called Chopal. And daily you will have in the arena that is faced in front of the cafeteria, this uh, performative space, uh, activation of that precise idea. So you will have four performances daily where the artists are going to bring these projects to life uh, through different type of uh, different different ways, like from poetry reading to to actions to to video to to different type of uh, expressions, and we think it's a fantastic complement precisely to to describe or to show this amazing trip for your senses and your knowledge through a continent that becomes one of the most important uh, geographies to understand the DNA of Dubai as a city, which is the South Asian community. Um, we think that it's extremely important to contextualize this in the, in the project that we put together, uh, because again, uh, our biggest effort is really to, pre to, to intend to bring something that doesn't look like, like what is done somewhere else. No? So for us, bringing energies that are not usual, you will see a list of galleries that are not the, the, the usual sub, sub, uh, sub, uh, suspects, that you see in other main Western presentations. We are looking into a different type of reality and we, leave, we believe that quality is somewhere else. Quality is, re is really uh, based mainly in how these galleries are involved with the communities they work with, uh, the geographies where they are placed, and how, how they are bu building up a certain presentations of what uh, culture is understood, contemporary is understood in non-Western uh, locations. Also for us, it's exciting to discuss what the Global South means, which is a term that is starting to be used 10 years ago. I remember that we were one of the first uh, projects to start to use the term of the word. At the time, it was extremely polemical because it had many links with many other things, and people were saying, oh, it's correct, it's not correct, then it was completely embraced by the art community, and these 10 years have been used in, in, in endless projects and occasions, and now has been part of the vocabulary of everyone. And now we're discussing also where is the Global South and where is the Global South going. So we think also it's extremely exciting to see how uh, certain neighborhoods, periphery of main, main financial centers or main cities in the world are becoming also Global South. No? How migration and displacement and, and COVID and, and the war and, and uh, certain conflicts that are happening in different parts of the world are bringing out communities that try to survive or try to understand or be understood by the place where they have moved. So, for example, it's extremely exciting to see all this young generation of uh, Northern African artists that have moved to, to Paris and are building up an entire roster of ideas and, 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 and presentations that you will see now to buy that are extremely exciting. So also the idea of you questioning yourself of what the Global South is about, where the Global South is, and what is the use of this term. Um, we are living uh, moments of growth in Dubai in terms of collecting. I think that the city is going through a fantastic moment. Uh, things have started with Expo 2020. Uh, COVID, in a way, uh, was tough. Uh, was tough in Dubai, was tough in the UAE. But we were one of the first countries to be vaccinated, and we were one of the countries uh, applying a policy that allowed too many people to come. Uh, there was a big migration that came just to spend a period of time escaping from, from, from the pandemic or trying to work in a completely different way. And I think that since then, the city has started to welcome uh, a range of uh, international uh, citizens that they collect. They've been surrounded by art and culture in a different way. They come from a different generation. And in a way, they are bringing to the city this completely new, new energy that is fascinating. Uh, the mixture of them with uh, all those collectors and art lovers and, and, and patrons of the arts that have been, in, been living in Dubai for the last uh, 10, 15 years brings this year an amazing roster of, uh, of, new, of new people and old people together that are going to give a completely, a completely new vision of what the fair is. No? I mean, we're extremely excited and really of starting to, to see that, that what we've been doing during these years is, is paying off. No? 
You will see also when you walk through the gallery halls a completely different Adubai. I think in my point of view, that's what I get from other people. I, the worst one to judge that, but I have this feeling referring on the aesthetics that you're gonna be seeing on the gallery halls. I mean, there's a look to different type of aesthetics. There's a look or there's a, a presence of a lot of young art production that is looking into the 24th, 25th century, uh, dealing with um, issues that affect all of us. A uh, lot of painting, painting mainly based in, in, in certain dreams or nightmares, in hopes and frustrations, in a palette of colors that is mainly dealing with, with, with uh, things that don't relate to nature or don't relate to real life that gives you a completely different perception of what reality is. So you're gonna see a lot of new, new, new artists and new presentations that are precisely dealing 